Hello! About a year ago, I published these three machines in a showcase video and a world download. And uh, these are uh, Sandmaker that are using the Carpet mod, or rather the Carpet Extra mod, and a feature in it called Renewable Sand, uh, where you can take a bit of uh, cobblestone, and you can drop an anvil on that cobblestone, and it turns into sand. I published these three designs, and uh, I was never really satisfied with any of them. Uh, the best one is this one, and I ended up using it, but it's only best because it's the fastest, but it's not particularly fast, it's not particularly efficient. It is very big, and uh, it has crashed on me a few times when I've been using it in my survival world. So, uh, a few months ago, I decided to make a new design. I made a new design, it's uh, much better than these ones. And um, I, I didn't publish any showcase video about it because I didn't think people were interested. But uh, since then, quite a few people have been actually asking me about that episode of my Let's Play. And if I would ever publish a guide about that Sandmaker. So I guess uh, let's do it. Uh, let's leave this world. And uh, one of the problems these machines have, well, all of them actually, and the new one as well, is that they are not unload safe. So let's turn them off so I don't have to repair them when I come back into this world, in case I ever want them to work again, because uh, they are complicated, hard to fix, and I don't really understand anymore how they work. It would take me hours to repair them, and hopefully the new one is slightly better in that respect, as in it will still crash, but it might be easier to understand and fix. And uh, here is the glorious new machine. As you maybe can see, I actually probably should have placed the old one next to it just besides comparison. And uh, the most importantly, it is much, much faster. Uh, the previous machine, I don't remember the exact details, but it was somewhere between five and 6,000 sand per hour for the machine. And this one does 14,400 sand per hour. And uh, instead of uh, getting everything into a hopper as the previous machine had to do, in this, you have an option to basically do whatever you want. The sand will be just flowing out of a water stream. We want a hopper here, of course, because it makes life easier to count the performance of it, but the, the performance is very simple. We are destroying six cobblestone every 30 game ticks, because 30 game ticks is how long it takes for the lava to combine with the water to generate the cobblestone. It's just the standard cobble generator. Now, let's turn it off because it's kind of noisy. Uh, and let's talk about its features. So up here we have waterlogged stairs, of course, standard cobble generator. Unfortunately, things don't render correctly because I'm using the sodium mod. Sorry about that. I'm not going to change that. It gives me good frame rates. But uh, in here we have waterlogged stairs. The lava is flowing into the stairs and generating cobblestone. We start a new cycle of the machine. So all my machines, or not all my machines, but many of my machines work on a like harvest cycle or whatever we want to call it. Uh, we started by this observer being lowered uh, by this piston. It powers this redstone line, goes into these target blocks, which sends a one tick pulse into these sticky pistons, which pull the sand from under the anvils. After a very short delay, uh, which is done by this observer here. We send a quick pulse into this sticky piston, which extends the slime blocks. Uh, so at that time, we have already pulled the sand on from under the anvils. The anvils have started falling. And by the time the anvils get close to the slime, they get pushed up by this pulse and they fly up. And it's perfectly timed that by the time the anvils are in this position, the pistons here extend, there is another de delay here with these observers, and they pull the cobblestone in, and in the same take the anvils start falling down, and immediately convert the cobblestone into sand, and the sand gets stuck on the slime and gets lowered down together with the anvils. And then we just send the signal through here, back to this piston to extend it, and lower it, and restart the cycle again. And the cycle is exactly 30 ticks long. And I think we can get the best angle if we look from below here. And I will just set the tick rate to something very, very slow. So at uh, 20 times slower than the game should run, maybe we have a chance. Let's also enable 
smooth client animations on uh, in the carpet mod. It means that I won't be able to move around too much, but we maybe can see what's going on. We're pulling the sand back. The anvils are starting to fall. At the same time, we're pulling the cobble back. We now bounce the anvils up. They landed on the cobble, converted it to sand. The sticky piston extends, pulls the sand and uh, the slime down and the uh, anvils fall down and now a new cycle should start. We start a new cycle by lowering that piston. We pull the sand back. The anvils start falling. We extend the sticky pistons and pull the cobblestone in. We bounce the anvils up. They fly up, convert the cobble into sand. The sand was stuck on the slime. We lower the slime and the sand and the anvils follow and a new cycle starts. Hopefully this is clear. It should be also clear why we are only doing six anvils because we could extend the cobble generator to be as big as, as we want, really. Six is actually not a good number for a cobble generator because it does require two lava sources. So both this and this is a lava source. Otherwise, you, you, we, we would have to do some annoying magic with the lava and I don't want to do that. So we have to have two lava sources. But the reason why we can only do six is because the sand gets stuck on the slime. So we cannot have more than six slimes for a total of 12 blocks because of push limit here. And uh, another interesting feature for uh, how this works is how we actually break the sand. Because that might not be clear. So something weird is going on here, right? Let's stop it and do an experiment. So sand... When it falls, it doesn't break unless it falls on something that isn't a full-size block. So, for example, a button would work. Honey isn't a full-size block, so we can just drop the sand on the honey and it will break. And that is perfect because um, I, originally when I was developing this machine, I was using chests here and ch uh, chests work as well. Uh, but uh, it just didn't look right, uh, so I used the honey instead. And what we have in here, uh, if we look peek carefully, there is a water source here and just a water stream. So the sand lands in a water stream and doesn't have to pass any droppers, hoppers, anything. It just keeps everything simple. And uh, the last feature on this machine is this little circuit here, which is my spam protection. Because this machine can go very, very bad if we power and depower this piston in the wrong moment. And this is my spam protection circuit. And uh, I have a video where I just basically developed how spam protection circuits for this should work. Because on the original, which I had in the Let's Play video, this was a pulse extender, which was just enormous. And I didn't really like it. But, so this is one module. What if we want to chain these? This is how you chain them. That's it. They can all be using the same water stream. The way we lay out the water, we have to have a two block gap between the machines. The glass blocks are are, are holding the water in, right? Uh, that would be very dangerous for the water to spill and it would end up on the redstone. Uh, this block here keeps the lava in, so that also needs to be there. Here we have a water source like this, a sign, a sign and some ice to make it a little bit easier for the sand to glide. And uh, yeah, so... That's how you normally chain water streams. Nothing spectacular in here. And uh, the blocks back here have to be immovable because there is slime flying around here and they're just there to keep the water in. And uh, the redstone is extended. The circuit is like exactly like here on this side. The only change that you need to do from uh, the single module is to change this to be like this and redstone right here and then at the junction between the modules just add a repeater that's it there is nothing else and the repeater here is just to get the signal strength up it, it doesn't serve any other purpose and it works the same way here i have six modules so we need like you actually need one and a half hoppers for one module uh, to keep up because they're generating one and a half hopper speed. So I just added a bunch of hoppers here. You can do something smarter with a storage system 
it's completely up to you how you handle your sand afterwards. This is just one option. The sand ends up in a water stream for a good reason, so that you have many options for how to handle it. There is a little chance that there will be some sand build up here, but I have never seen it not flow through all the way to the end. But it might slow down quite a lot, like, like that bit here. It doesn't seem that it gets rescued, but after a while it does. I don't really know the exact mechanics for why it works, but it seems to work, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Other than that, this is exactly the same. Uh, like I said, you just need to reroute the signal here and then connect everything with repeaters like this. And you can chain these modules. Now, the question is, what if you have a server that doesn't allow a carpet mod? Space Eagle uh, on my Discord, uh, he actually had that exact problem. So he found a different mod. He found a mod that is called Anvil Crushing Recipes. Now, the Anvil Crushing Recipes, and, and let me make a little bit of a rant here. Anvil Crushing Recipes uh, has a default data pack because it's controlled by data packs for how it works. And its default data pack crushes cobblestone to gravel. I get it. It's much more realistic. The, the whole data pack is very, very realistic. But it's a case of uh, realism being more important than good gameplay for someone. And uh, yeah, that isn't fun. It doesn't make for a fun game if you just make it super realistic. In a super realistic game, you would spend one third of your time in the game just sleeping. Then uh, the other third of the time just gathering enough resources so you can have food and shelter for the day. And uh, the rest you would be just too tired to do anything useful. We don't want games to be realistic. Realism sucks. That's why we have games. Anyway, so um, the whole idea that uh, the data pack only does gravel from cobblestone is just stupid. We want to solve the problem of obtaining sand. We don't, like, gravel is easy to obtain. Sand isn't. Rant. So there will be a data pack. Uh, I will add it in the description uh, that implements the recipe that crushes cobble to sand. So you could use this contraption with the Anvil Crushing Recipes mod as well, and I will link to the mod as well, but there is one big difference between the machine that can be used with Anvil Crushing Recipes and with the Carpet Extra mod, and that is the anvils have to fly higher. I can't run the machine right now because I don't have the Anvil Crushing Recipes mod enabled. I only have the Carpet Extra mod enabled for crushing. Uh, so you need to allow the anvils to fly higher. And the only method that Space Eagle has found, because he, he did all the research here and he implemented the data pack as well. And the only way he found to allow the anvils to fly high enough, but not too high, are the Wither Skeleton Skulls. Or any mob, mob head works... I just think that with the skeleton skulls are the easiest one to obtain. And the problem is that we don't want the anvil to fly too high because then it get, will get damaged. And uh, also the timing becomes wrong if it flies too high. And in the anvil crushing recipes mod, uh, it doesn't seem that glass works or any full block works because the anvils don't fly high enough. Uh, so mob heads work and uh, it solves the problem in that mod. So, now we have a single module, uh, we have a module for a different mod, where this also works. Uh, we know how to chain all these modules, the chaining would work exactly the same for this one. Uh, you can chain them pretty much as far as you want and as the server performance will let you. The, the performance this thing eats, like you can see I have one and a half MSPT in background noise right now. And if I enable six modules, it should jump up to maybe two and a half, uh, yeah, something like, oh, maybe, oh, maybe slightly more. It's, let's say, one MSPT per three modules, if we're being a little bit conservative. 150 modules, you can arrange them however you want. You could probably arrange them in a cross pattern so that you just turn on one switch and then stand in the middle where all the water streams meet and just fill up your inventory and become your own storage system because this might actually, like, this is already too much for an eight speed Schalke box loader. So uh, the storage for this could be actually an issue. So we have these three options. What could this wall be hiding? Well, what if you're mad? and want to make a giant, giant cube of sand. 
and I will leave a link to my Let's Play episode where I did just that, where I just went mad. Well, it becomes a little bit more awkward how to chain these, because here we were chaining them with two block gap between them, but if we want to make a giant cube of sand, we can't have any gap between the sands, right? So uh, the way I figure out how to do this is basically to have the modules just alternate uh, rotation. So this, in, this one is in the normal rotation, and this is 180 degrees ro rotated, then this is normal, 180 degrees, etc. And uh, they have to be offset because otherwise slime would be touching things it's not supposed to touch. But uh, other than that, yeah, we're getting a straight line of sand that will be falling down in this line here and landing in front of these pistons. So what can you use this for? Well, I used it to give back all the sand I took from my mining desert in my Let's Play world. Uh, Maybe you can find another use for it. Maybe you made a perimeter that you don't like and you want to fill it in again because you don't want a big hole in your world. Maybe someone broke the rules on your server and um, made a perimeter even though you said you didn't want perimeters on your server. Well, then you can make just a giant cuboid of sand. I don't know. I don't know what this is useful for, but it's a fun machine. So I'm going to add it in the world download as well. Anyway, that should probably cover everything I had to say about these machines. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments and I'll answer anything I understand or join Discord and uh, we can discuss this machine or other machines uh, there. There will be a world download in the description that contains everything I showed you here. Thanks a lot for watching and have a good Sunday. Bye!